What's up, everybody? The Smoking Word Podcast, we back. This is episode number six. It's been a while since we did the last one. I want to thank everybody who's been tuning in. This time, we're coming at you live from San Francisco. I don't even know where the fuck we at. And we're, not, <laughs> we're in a cave somewhere in the mountains. The mountains of yeah. San Francisco. I actually came in a day early. We're starting... Um, uh, West Coast Run, Madball and Strife. By the time this comes out, this should be over with. <laughs> but <laughs> at least we'll out. have eaten pizza. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. But um, we decided. I said um, I want to take advantage of being out here. And today we have a very special guest, my very very good friend and very interesting human being, <laughs> my man Lars. And I want you to name the band Lars from and start from the first band you oh, in. Oh shit. Lars from uh, Lars from Rancid, Lars from uh, the old from Casuals, Lars from Lars Fredrickson and the Bastards, Lars from Oxy's Midnight Runners, Lars from uh, fucking Chattanooga, just, yeah, fucking, <laughs> whatever, bro. A <laughs> hundred million bands, a yeah. hundred million bands. Yeah, but I want to everybody. He's an old friend of mine's, and um, he plays like he just said. He plays for a, a band named Rancid, which a lot of people seem to like also now he's he's killing it with the old firm <laughs> casuals and i want to tell you you just reminded me that you guys just got back off tour yes from europe with yes. agnostic front yes tell me a little bit the animals i know what it's like but let the people out there know what's it like to tow agnostic front well let's just put it this way the third no after the first show of the tour we were driving from france into the uk <laughs> and uh Roger all of a sudden comes up running. We were at a truck stop and he comes banging on the window going, you guys got to get the fuck out of here. Come on, come on, come on. We got to go. We got to go. And we're like, what? So we run out of the fucking place because we thought there was, there was beef or something. And what happened was some refugees had broken both the locks on the trailer and had tried to sneak in to our, in, 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 into the trailer and get into the UK because there's, you know, Syria's going off, right? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I know. So we run out there and Roger said, you know, he opened up the, they had broken the locks. They, he, he'd opened up the door. Six guys ran out, right? So Casey opened up the bass player for Old Firm, for Old Firm opens up the, the other door because it was one of those trailers with the two doors. And there's two women stuffed way in the back in the corner. And we're like, you guys got to get out of there. And they're like, no, take us to England. And we're like, we can't take you to fucking England. <laughs> Right? Because, I mean, you get fined, number one, and then you're smuggling people. So crazy. It's fucking, it was nuts. I, the, I know I heard about that, and I was like, wait a minute, <clears> something <throat> about smuggling refugees? And I was like, <laughs> what? I was like, oh, shit, Roger was having flashbacks. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But well, we were, we were smuggling a refugee. That was Roger yeah, Merritt. And, and I could see, you know, the whole thing that uh, what got to me was, you know, Roger must have bugged out because he, he yeah. kind of, he comes from everybody. Um, Roger from Agnostic Front is Cuban for everybody who doesn't know. And um, he came at a time when it was yeah, a time to leave or people were, it's a crazy time right now. Well, I always fuck with Roger. I say, you know, you know Roger, we're, we're both Vikings. I just came over here on a wooden ship. She, a sh wooden ship. You came over here on a rubber raft. Yeah, on run, a tire. <laughs> yeah, but he's American now, finally. Yeah, finally. And how, and, but how long was that <clears throat> tour? It was, uh, it was 25 in a row. Oh, 25, that's good, all star. Yeah. Why well, do you need a day off for? Well, no, we what actually, the fuck you want actually, a day off for? You, 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 yeah, right. <laughs> to rest? Yeah. Oh, to like, get away from everybody? No. Why would you want that on tour? Well, you know what? We did actually have one day off, and it wasn't like by choice. We ended up driving the 11, 12 hours from where we were to Bordeaux, and then had like eight hours uh, off the bus, and then had to get back on the bus and, and drive another 15 hours to Madrid or whatever. So there was one technical day off, but... It was definitely, it was probably 
Uh, yeah, it was probably one of the, the longer tours, you know, that I've done in my life. I mean, I've done 21 in a row, but yeah. I've never done 25. It's been a while since, though. For you, oh, from you doing a couple spot shows, right? Or what was this? It's been a minute since you were touring. Yeah, right? because Paul, you know, when we were over in Europe last time, decided that he uh, wanted to get all punk rock and not pay for the pisser. Because, you know, like over there, they got to pay for yeah. the, the pissers. And it, the fuck thing is like six in the morning, I get woken up and he's holding his arm. And he's like, dude. Lars, Lars, I'm like, fuck. And I look at his arm and his bone's sticking out of his fucking skin. And I'm just like, oh, this is bad. Would he try to hop a turnstile at a truck stop to avoid paying for the toilet and uh, basically fell on his arm in compound fracture, right? <clears throat> but the, here's the most fucked up part about it. Because Paul is the most sensible dude out of all of us. Right, he's most responsible. You know what I mean? <laughs> this should happen like me or Casey, not not Paul. Right? And I looked. Uh, you know, when we got out of the van, because I wanted to have a quick cigarette before we went anywhere, there was the forest. Was like two feet away. He could have just went and pissed in the forest for free. But whatever. You know what are you gonna do? But so. yeah, but, <laughs> but I, he had the broken arm for like a hundred years. About a year. Like every time I see him, he got a fucking broken arm, and yeah. I'm like, that shit. You know. Yeah. But it was good that you had uh, a fill-in, right? Well, yeah, we got three fill-ins uh, on that tour. So you after- had Dave Lombardo. <laughs> Who else you had? Uh, Peter Chris. Peter Chris and the black dude from Arsenio Hall show. Yeah, yeah. That, but he that, was, was dope. Yeah, but he was, and he was the best. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we had Jens from um, from who fills in for Stomper '98, and his band's called the Ruckers, and and he played drums for three shows. And we had Ray Dust. Oh yeah, Ray, yeah, Knuckle, Knuckle Dust, Dust, yeah, old friends, and yeah. um, Knuckle Dust. Actually, I think they're dropping a record or just dropped the record, I think so or yeah. something. But look out for them too. And Shout out to all our UK family. Yeah, yeah. What's up? And then uh, Robin Guy finished it off. So, and then we didn't play shows for a year, and that was those were our first shows. Yeah, and um, th- on this last tour, did you do the UK? We did three shows. We did um, Manchester, Bristol, and London. Did you see? The business, any of the business guys. I didn't see any of those guys, but I did see Steve Whale. Oh, all right. You know, and I saw Watt for John, of course. Yeah, yeah. I actually ran into Mickey Fitz for the first time in many years. Um, the business is an old um, oi band. Or what, I don't know what you want to no, they were. Label. I, 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 I know them as oi band, but some people have these other <laughs> whatever, street, punk, rock, whatever you want to call yeah. them. To me, they were an oi band. Yeah, oi band. O- old um, friends with us, and they have an old connection to the New York hardcore scene. Absolutely. But I actually got to run into Mickey Fitz for the first time in a minute. So I just, when I think of London, I think of the business. Absolutely. You know, and I think of West Ham also. Oh, well, that's too bad. I'm, so, I, I'm, I'm, so, I'm glad I'm not living in your fucking brain because it must be fucked up in there. Everybody, we're going we're gonna to sample in West Ham every time he talks about um, football. I'm forever blowing bubbles. Is that the Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. You know but it's harder. You got to say it harder. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, bubbles, yo. You guys are forever blowing but, dudes. But all right, now let me ask. This is what I was wondering. I know. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Campbell, California. And where's that from here? 60 miles south. Oh, so um, San Jose basically is the big city around where I grew up. All right. Now, let me ask you this. This is one thing I always wondered. All right. So there was, I know you came up with the punk rock. I know you came up with oil, a yes. lot of oil, of oh, course. Yeah. And I know um, later on, you know, like every, everything, the East Coast, uh, yeah. the whole hardcore thing oh, yeah. came in oh, and yeah. everything. When I, This is what I wanted to know about Rancid that always. All right. I even I was never into Rancid when you guys were at your most at your height, at your most popping, because I was trying at that mo- at that time I was into hard, like trying to be at the hardest. Sure. Like, anything that had melody, I was like, like no, it got to be hard shit. But <laughs> everybody, all the fellas, loved you guys. Yeah. And I just didn't give anything with uh, melody a chance. Sure. Unless it was H two O. Just because, <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know. Yeah, but yeah. whatever. But in general, I didn't. <clears throat> but I remember then I seen you guys play live, and I was like, fuck, these motherfuckers killed it. And I grew up. There was a time in New York when um, the hardcore shows um, stopped because of violence. Yes. So at that time, the scene was still together. We would start going to Oi and Ska shows. Mm-hmm. And um, I like I got to see a lot of classic, even Ska shows, like the Scottalites back in the day as yeah, a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These, they were like 50 years old when I was fucking 18. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but um, what I wanted to know, I, I, I always heard that reggae, ska mix... And rancid. Oh yeah. But what was it from Sky or was it from a reggae tip or 
who was the reggae guy? Who was the ska guy in the band? Well, you know, obviously there's the connection with Op Ivy with Matt and Tim. And they love that two tone shit. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's, it's a little bit of both. I mean, you know, growing up, my brother was a skinhead. So I heard the skinhead reggae stuff. And I heard the ska too, like the specials, you know, that, 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 that two tone, the second wave sort of thing. Uh, uh, the specials, the selector, English beat, if you want to be kind and throw them in, um, you know, bad manners. Um, but I always, I got exposed early to the, to the skinhead reggae stuff, you know what I mean? And then the oi was from, the, from there, you know? So, um, I think, you know, the, the, the ones who, who would, I guess you could attribute it, that style coming into Rance. It was definitely Tim and Matt, you know what I mean? And, and what were you into then? What was oi. the style? That, oh, I, that was my shit. You know, that's always been my shit. All right. And, what was your first, what was your, if you had to pick one oi band, one last resort, Last Resort. Yeah. I love The Last Resort. Oh, they're, my, they're probably, I mean, for me, them in the business, I mean, but it, it depends. Last Resort is a band, like, 100% number one for me. The business, Steve Whale was such a huge guitar. It's Steve Whale and Steve Kent were such huge guitar influences on me because they had a melody, you know, especially Steve Kent. He, he did, like, these these cool chords and melody, and then when Steve Whale came in, he, he brought that melody, but he also brought that punk. And, he, and the way he plays, he plays kind of a... a he kind of plays behind and then he pushes it ahead with his rhythms, you know, so it makes it chaotic, you know what I mean? Yeah, they had good melodies. The business was, um, be- like, I always thought they had the songs, but what I liked about The Last Resort, they were almost like a hardcore band. 100%. Well, they, you know, when you talk to Roy, who's a Millwall guy, you know, the greatest uh, team on the... You know, oh, salute to a lot of props to The Last Resort, mad respect, unfortunately... We're West Ham over here, and and Lars right now. If you looked at him right now, he's uh, anyway. Well, you know what I hate the most, and I'm not I'm not saying you know if you're gonna support an English team, at least go to the fucking you know, at least go see them play at least once. You know what I mean? I did. I know, but I, what I'm saying is a lot of these. Oh yeah, these yeah. Kids I agree. Manchester United scarves don't know their ass from a hole in the wall, or the West Ham scarf, or whatever scarf that they're wearing. You know, they've never even been in, seen their team. You know what I mean? That they're supposed I, to be I agree. supporting. You know what I mean? And, and it's like, that's the only thing that like, I always got ish, I have any issue with. Like, if, you, if you've been there, then shit. It's your team. You know what I mean? And um, this was a thing also, um, you motherfuckers kill it live. Now, you guys rehearse a lot. I always ask bands this because there's bands that rehearse and there's bands that don't. You know, people think that bands are in the studio all the time. Right. You know, like, they live rehearsing. Right. Some bands, like, every, everybody got a different remedy. And I always wonder... What guys do before? Do you rehearse before tour? You yeah. get together yeah. randomly? What you think? Because you guys are tight and you guys, it's crazy because again, not till you guys, I saw you guys live, then I went back, then I was like, you know, a dope song is a dope song. And I ain't telling you to thank gas you up because I don't got to gas you no, up. No, but but you. then later on, and I was like, and you know, this dude with the bass, he's, <laughs> he's ridiculous. Yeah, no, he's you know off I mean? the hook. All you motherfuckers. But he's got mad respect for you and your style. Because you know, my you, style is, is two strings of death. Yeah, but but, but yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, no, I mean? fa- but that may be fair enough, but like you bring a rhythm and a groove, that's what the bass guitar is supposed to be doing. It's supposed to be the backbone with the drums. That's the whole power. If you're only, your band is only as good as your rhythm section. And, and that's what I liked about you guys. You had, um, it was almost like a little orchestra. You know, you're doing your thing. You're singing your parts. Tim's doing his thing. Um, the bass is rocking. The drums are going. And it's like, dope. Yeah. You know, and, and again, you know, <clears throat> and it's crazy because we come from crazy music. Yeah. And um, people don't understand that we could also play. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it ain't just the metal bands yeah, or... No. <clears throat> or whatever you know but um well i can't play metal shit and a lot of metal guys that i've talked to can't play punk shit yeah. because it's it's two totally different styles i'm sure if i sat down for six months and that's all i did i could probably get close to something but i would never be you know a fucking carrie king or a fucking um uh, uh um god what the fuck's his name Guitar I'm Doug Weber. Yeah, oh, Dougie Weber. Yeah, Doug Weber. You know, I want to just talk about Doug Weber's books. Yeah, you know. Right now, <laughs> yeah. the, the motherfucker's got Carl Sagan, Pale Blue Dot. He, I bet you Dougie thought he was buying hits of acid when he got that. Well, book. right now, we're coming at you guys from where, where Mountainside on in the mountains of SF. 
And we're surrounded by sex books. <laughs> yeah, the sex, a man's guy. One one thing is how to get a hard on 101. <laughs> and then you got your random comic the, the, book the, right there. Oh, look at the other one, oh, the, the little the little man on the boat. <laughs> That's what people say. But oh, all right, Jesus. but um, all right. Now let me ask you this too. This is another question. Um, wait, all right. one, what for? I want need to give props. Exodus guitar player. What the fuck? Um, 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 um Gary, Gary Holt. Holt. Sorry, Gary Holt. Who's one of the raddest dudes? Yeah, but he's one of the fucking raddest guitar players. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I want I got to give props. All right. So was did you always want to play guitar or you just? You know what? It was funny because like when I grew up listening to music, I didn't start playing guitar Whoa. until I was like sixteen. Hold on one second. And, uh, we got a fucking riot over here. Where's the riot? The, the TV. Oh well. Hold on one second. Well, at least it's the Warriors are winning. Yeah, hold on right now. We have some. There, <laughs> there we go. go. Oh shit! Thank you, Dougie. We got a, on the he technician to, he over had, here. Yeah, he had to trip over all of his sex books shout, before he could turn yeah, off the TV. Yeah, shout out to fucking um, <laughs> Doug and Dan. And the, oh, there it goes the again. Sex. What the fuck, Dougie? There's there's a fucking was a ghost in the machine. <laughs> Somebody doesn't want to let you talk about your guitar. I know what a dick. But uh, but um, no, when I was I it didn't I didn't actually start picking up the guitar until I was about uh, fifteen. Um, my brother had a guitar, and every time he caught me playing it, he kicked the shit out of me. So that was a deterrent. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then, you know, and plus the punk rock music and all the music that I was listening to, you felt like you were part of the band anyways. There was no real rock star shit. Yeah. You know, it wasn't like you were listening to Motley Crue, where there was, you know, talking about, you know, sex, drugs, and blondes with big tits. That wasn't my life and Corvettes and all that shit. My life was, you know, low-income housing and fucking... Yeah, yeah. You, you know what I mean? So... I always felt like when I go see a band like Social Distortion or whoever the fuck it was, that you felt like you were part of the band because you were part of the scene. So I came, kind of started playing guitar a little later than I guess most people would, I guess. And um, what I was going to tell you, um, that's what I was going to say about, um, well, remind, what I was thinking about earlier today was um, The Bastards. Yes. That um, That's what I heard when you did that. I was kind of like, you know, this is like some hard oi yeah you know what i mean that's that, what i thought of and, and then i was like um i remember the ra ra rancid had sat back and we were, i was doing the hazen street and we yep. were on tour together that's on the right. warp tour yep. and you were the only guys we would go watch because i wasn't really into any of those other bands yeah. but i grew up with oi music people yeah. um sometimes take my accent and and, and <laughs> think um i just grew up you know with um you know, I'm KRS One, which I did. <laughs> I grew up, you know, straight hip hop, New York hardcore, because my older brother. Yeah. And I grew up with oi music because of my brother. You know, yeah, I yeah. like. I always seem to like anything aggressive. Well, I mean, but that's the thing. It's street music, and <clears throat> whether it's Aretha Franklin or fucking <clears throat> The Last Resort, if it if it speaks to you, it speaks to you. You know, and I mean, I'm not trying to compare Aretha Franklin to The Last, Last Resort, but if you listen to those old Aretha tracks, that's hardcore shit. Yeah, yeah you no, know, definitely. That's soul. It's a pounding backbeat. You know, that, that that's another question I wanted to ask you was, all right, what's something that you listen to that ain't oi, that ain't hardcore, that ain't punk rock? Well, I love, I love, I'm, you know, I've been rediscovering because I kind of missed it the first time around thrash metal. Like, so I'm, you know, I mean, there was bands I saw and I liked, you know, like Exodus or Slayer or Testament, you know, a lot of the Bay Area shit or whatever. And I even saw a few of those bands, you know, when they were going off at Ruthie's. But, um, you know, like I, I didn't really ever, you know, Slayer, I can... Bono, I can say 100% I was a fan from the first time I heard them to this day. Like, I love all the records, and, and um, you know, I don't think they made a bad record. I know there's yeah. some people who go, oh, well, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I love the Slayer shit. Exodus, I love. Um, Slayer is the best metal band oh, ever. Easy, easily. They, um, you know, everybody knows I love Motorhead. I grew up listening to Kiss and Cheap Trick and ACDC. Um, you know, th those are kind of the staples, you know. The cars, I like the cars. Um, Freddie loves that shit. I got to hear that in the van all the time. <laughs> I got to hear fucking, <clears throat> yeah. Um, um, but I yeah. love, you know, I loved hardcore from the moment I heard it because hardcore was the original skinhead music I mean, yeah. for America anyways. You know, AF, Cro Mags, you know, uh, a lot of those bands. And then, you know, and thank God we got Mad Ball from all that shit and and sick of it all and bands like that. I mean, because the hardcores when 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 Rancid was was kind of at our height, those were the shows I would be going to see because um, that was the real 
music for me you know that's what i was listening to 24 7 at that time you know murphy's law mad ball sick of it all St- agnostic front you know um you know all those bands and i always I always had sort of a an affinity for the new york music kraut i loved kraut you know i saw kraut in 1982 yeah or they were old that was a like way before me i didn't start going to shows to way later tonight like 88 that i was you know that was my time and that's like the end of that right kind of uh, first, second wave. Right. You know, it was a weird time, but I got to catch the an era of hardcore that I was lucky, which is very popular now. I got to catch and see all the right. classic bands. I didn't see the Minor Threats. Right. And though the Bad Brains. I, bad Brains I were s- around, but not I the saw, Minor Threats. I, s- all. I saw Bad Brains and I saw Minor Threat, and I, I didn't, and I, and everybody, you know, I'm probably going to get slaughtered. I, I don't like the Bad Brains. I, I, they got a few good songs, but they never, for me. Listen, I not only that. Listen, I've been catching shit for fucking twenty eight years of my life. Yeah, because I'm you know twenty eight <laughs> years old. You know, but because I said I don't like the bad brains. Yeah, and I say this: I like songs of theirs of the later years. There's songs I like, but if I like three songs, I don't say to me that's not a fan. No, exactly. You know what I mean? And I was never crazy about it. There was, it was just a certain sound. Like I appreciate it, and I give them all the props in the world 100%. you know what i mean they deserve all the you know they were doing first of all being black dudes playing totally white music and playing it crazy and yeah. better than some of the than a lot of the bands at the yeah, time yeah, of course you know not only that you know they went to they were in the culture you know they were involved yeah, they weren't yeah. just like oh let's try to do some crazy but again i wasn't a big fan yeah i get it but props but me too, you know, like... Um, yeah. Well, it's like Poison Idea. Like, a Poison Idea, I, I, I'm i not really a fan of. I, yeah, there's a few good songs. But, like, they're not, I, I don't own... I have, a, yeah, a record in my collection, but I don't go to the stereo and put on Poison Idea or I don't put on the Bad Brains. You know, if I listen, want to listen to Hardcore, I'll listen to Terror, I'll listen to some of the new shit or, you know, your new record or what, whatever it is. I always kind of stay on top of that shit or in the new bands, you know, so... But a lot of the old school bands, you know, still hit the turntable too. But you know, I, I, I'm the type of guy like if, if a record comes out, I buy it. You yeah, know what I mean, because I like to support. You know, I remember getting that Chrome Mags demo. My brother ordered the Chrome Mags demo out of the back of Maximum Rock and Roll. <laughs> you know what I mean? And 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 got it on a cassette tape. Which yeah, I still yeah, that have. Was the, uh, that's the, <clears throat> the the old guys always talk about the Chrome Mag demo tape. Well, and, but I have right, it. the demo I, tape. It's it's actually at my house. Oh, you know that's I mean? cla- That's you worth. Know? That's a classic. But I would never item. get rid of it just because of the shit. I mean, I got powerhouse demos on tape. By the way, Chris Powerhouse in the house. He's right over here. He's right over here. You know, making sure he's doing some business. I mean, powerhouse. You know, was he's one on of the those, phone. He's texting. Yeah. He's um. He's, you know, he's painting. We, he did, he already painted the house. In, and in here, actually, today it's, it looks like a Benetton commercial. We got freaking <laughs> Thai white trash guys. We got. <laughs> Dugs, we got jock heads and all, and all types of people here today. Yeah. But well, shout a, out to everybody in, in San Francisco. But yeah, I, I mean, you know, Powerhouse was another great hardcore band. I mean, yes. they were setting it off over here on the West Coast while you guys were setting it off on the East Coast. Yeah, I mean that that Powerhouse was our like you know, and when I say our, because you know, I saw Powerhouse a hundred fucking times. Yeah, and I was a big fan, you know, and helped produce a few records but point i'm trying to make is they were our hardcore band out here you know what i mean <clears throat> that were doing it and pretty much probably influenced a lot of the 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 west coast hardcore bands that are here today yeah so. no definitely and do you still like touring yes and no <laughs> i i know like you know because but i want people to understand this because it's a People think um, as good as we got it, yeah. it ain't that good always. Well, you know, here's the thing. It's kind of like this. It doesn't matter what level you do it at. You you know, what is hard now, and the reason why I say that, because there is a caveat to it, is because I have two kids, and it's hard to uproot myself from my family and go and do it. And when I'm I'm out there, I'm having fun for the first three four days. It's great. I'm stoked because I'm sleeping. You know what I mean? I'm eating like shit. I'm doing whatever I want to do. Smoking cigarettes, doing whatever. Oh yeah, cigarettes. A lot of cigarettes. A lot of cigarettes. <laughs> and I naps. I don't. Yeah, and I love taking naps. You know, I'm I'm the I'm you know. But anyways, I got my own golden girl. Uh, I got yes. one, uh, <laughs> 
I got one of the Golden Girls here today. Tim, Payaso, Stigma, and Mackie. That's what well, you got to nap, bro. Yeah. You got to nap. You'll hit that age. Yeah. You're 28. Yeah. You- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 2018. But-, <laughs> but yeah, you know, so it's like, uh, you know, for me, it's right around that four days, and you're, you're kind of like, you know, what becomes the grind is is not necessarily the shows or 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 the extra touring. It's the the absence of your family. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, you got family all the way out across the United States. I know we do. We got our bro- our brothers out there, and it's always great to see them. And that and that is a great substitute, you know. But it's just like it's nothing like smelling your kid, <laughs> hanging yeah. with your kid, yeah, telling you know, them to shut up. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> whatever the fuck it is, like you know, watching football or hockey with them or whatever it is, you know. And that's that's the grind. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. And then you, as you get older, it's fucking shit starts to hurt. <laughs> yeah, like hips, yeah. Stigma's always talking about his hips, dude. I, I mean, like, how, when? How old were you when you f- started touring? I w- I started touring when I was nineteen years old, and um, it's and and again, yeah, you know how that is. Like, you don't even think about it. Mm-hmm. I was supposed to join Mabo for like two weeks, right? And this is freaking twenty years later. Yeah, that that two weeks turned to twenty years. Yeah, but it's um. For, for uh, again, kind of like you, like we didn't expect to do what we do this long. It was never a plan. No, it was every record was kind of like I would look at friend like, are we gonna do another record? Right. Like I did, you know, it, it was a fluke. Like we totally how everything happened, but then it, it you know, it's what we do. But yeah, but you never. A lot of bands don't last ten years. Yeah, no, it's hard, man. You it's know? hard. It's hard to deal with a. Um, Two people, one hundred percent. It's you know I've been divorced. Yeah, I, I like like f- you know me and Freddie's my girl for twenty years, <laughs> and he's the girl. Like I always say, you know, we're a couple, but he's the he's the, he's the, he's the bottom. He's the catcher. Yeah, yo, and shout out to Freddie. He'll be with us on some other ones. He's back home. We'll be we're starting a tour tomorrow, so all the rest of the fellas are coming. But um, yeah, but you know how it's it's just you're dealing, you know, with I mean, there's a lot of things that can happen on a tour that can actually take the fucking energy out of you you know what i mean whether it's a hot show you know some you know or just not being able to find a fucking shitter yeah no it, it sucks that's what i tell people waking up not knowing where you're gonna take a shit where you're gonna take a piss um where you're at and all this thing and i was thinking about it a lot because we were like we were talking earlier i was thinking about stigma Vinny Stigma is going to be 60 yeah. years old yeah. in december everybody and not only is he better than ever He's on tour right now. He's probably um, drinking a beer. Yeah. Probably um, 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 more energy than half the people in the yep. venue. Easily. And um, and he's going to be probably playing another hundred years, which I hope at least. And when I talk to him, I can't. But you know, for somebody who has every reason in the world to could be bitter about things. Yeah. He he's in a very good place. He's happy and. When he talks about music, that's his, you know, it's like all our lives. Yeah, exactly. And I was talking with Stigma not too long ago, and I just saw it at him. It was like, you know, he he knows what it is. Like I said, he figured it out. He's like, he knows what we got. We're very lucky to do what we no, do. Listen, I, and, and, with, and with all due respect, I mean, like, you know, to... To to my life, <laughs> you know, I'm I'm no way, shape, or form am I saying that I hate my life or anything like that. I'm very grateful at everything that I've been given, and I'm very grateful that I get to go see different countries. It's opened my mind and made me a a better. I mean, I became a man out on the road. Yeah, you know, I, I was the same age as you, maybe a year younger when I started touring. I moved to England to join the UK subs. You know, what I mean, yeah. When they told me, I remember that I was like that you played with them and you went to England. Yeah, you I moved there. Yeah, I moved there. I grabbed my shit i had 250 dollars. I, I i remember like i got the word that i was i was in the band and i went and got a job for f- three or four weeks i got enough money to buy a plane ticket and i went over there with 250 dollars in my pocket and that was that was the rest of history you know but um yeah i mean you, you know i i love what i do i mean i don't see myself i know that if i for whatever reason stop touring um i'd probably lose my shit yeah <laughs> we we had a, a, I hate that fucking hiatus, whatever the fucking word is, hiatus. 
<laughs> However you fucking assholes out there say it. Is that French? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's French. Yo, shout out to yeah, France, yeah, by yeah. the way. What's up? But yeah, um, there was a we had a we had a time when um the band was it wasn't it, it seemed longer than it was, but there was a time when Mad Boy we broke up right. because um Freddie was in um college. No, no, like I heard on a podcast and uh. Uh, the the boys from Wisdom and Chains, they were one of their homeboys was calling Jay on college. <laughs> well, Freddie was in college. Oh, he was up in college. <laughs> I, I just tell people, oh no, Freddie was in jail, and he kind of he would look at me, but I was like, he was like, yeah, I was in jail. <laughs> but um, basically, um, that we had like about less than a year off. That year felt like ten years to me. Yeah, because it's all I've done since I'm a young yeah, kid. Yeah. I've been in a band since I'm fifteen, and I've been in Mabel since I'm nineteen. Well, you know what, man? You, uh, listen, it, it's like in that movie. I think it's one of the first scenes in Apocalypse Now, when Martin Sheen is in his hotel room and he's getting all drunk and he's yeah. doing karate and yeah. kicking <laughs> the, the mirrors and shit. And he says, like, when when I was back home, all I wanted to do was be out here. And when I was out here, all I wanted to do was be back home. And it's and I'm not saying or trivializing war in any way and even though that's a movie or whatever but it's kind of the way that you, you feel a little bit like when you're home you're like fuck i'm itching to get out there and then when you're out there you're like fuck i'm itching to get home and it's yeah. just like a never-ending thing and yes you have fun and like i said thus you run into all your friends and people enjoy your music and that's the greatest fucking thing that you can experience in your life when you're playing music and people dig it you know what i mean that's why you know i play music it's not i never did it to make money or anything it was it was about being part of something you know what i mean and like no way would i look that something in the face and spit at it you know what i mean for me it's like since i was 11 fucking years old i've been doing this shit you know that's over a, a, a three quarters of my life at this point like I ain't leaving anytime soon. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm I got here. nowhere to go. No. It's either here, jail, or to to God because I'm going to heaven. Yeah, everybody I, out there, <laughs> just letting y'all, you motherfuckers know, I'm going to heaven. I'm going up there. Like I'm it or going not, to, I'm going to Valhalla, but I'll, <laughs> I'll keep the door open for you. Yeah, and um, <laughs> but um, what's new with Rancid? What's new with Old Firm? Old Firm. Um, we just got done with this tour. Paul just had a surgery. Now, whenever this podcast airs, it was in November. So, um, he's got the metal plate out. So we're going to start hopefully kicking it into high gear. Rancid's got some shows next year. We just, um, got done finishing an EP. Um, I don't know how many songs will be on it just yet. We recorded a song for a comp that's coming out. How many recorded songs you got? Like that, that you say are in the bag? Uh, new in, songs in the bag, probably about 10. Damn, that's a fucking that's a big bag. Well, you know, we just we just but we, you know that's what we do when we get together. We just write, you know what I mean, and and that it just seems so natural for us to get in there. And you know, you were talking about the whole rehearsing thing a while back ago. It's like since we got Brandon in the band, there hasn't really been too much hardcore rehearsing because Brandon's so fucking he's good. Dope, yeah, he's dope. That like. You know, not taking any away from anything from Brett, but you know, Brett never really practiced. Mm -hmm. So the only practice he would get would be when we practiced, and then you know, you would have to kind of build it up. So you'd be practicing for three weeks before a tour. Now you, we practice, you know, four days, five days maybe, but we're also playing 60, 70 songs, seeing which works, you know? So, 60, 70 songs. Well, we have a lot of fucking, we put like fucking 500 songs on each one of our fucking goddamn records. Crazy, dude. But I know it's, it's kind of, it's kind of wild when you think about it, like just, but, you know, we wrote a lot of fucking songs. I mean, Life won't wait. There was eight. There was like something crazy, like eighty or hundred reel to reel tapes that held twenty minutes of music, and there might have even been more than that. And we only what was nineteen or twenty songs on that record, but we literally recorded eighty, ninety songs. It would just be like it would be an. You 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 don't understand what it takes me to write one song, <laughs> let alone have freaking ninety in the bag. Like, well, but yeah, but look at it. it's like think about it this way. We yeah, we might have had ninety songs, but only nineteen made a record. Well, yeah, but of course, you know what I mean. But but you guys are writing. Rancid is writing. Yeah. Um, Old firm. I've written about four songs for our next record. Um, I've got a, a title in my head. Um, Oxy's Midnight Runners. I've, we've got the uh, the next two seven inches coming out. One in December, one in February, March, and then we're gonna release uh, all four seven inches on a on a uh, and one song that we did for a comp on a like a full length twelve inch, 
And so that'll be out. And hopefully we'll play some shows next year with that. It's with Mike Oxley from the Fat Skins. He sings. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, Jesus uh, uh, from the Warlords, who was a a Los Angeles-based oi band. And uh, Dave was in some hardcore bands. And, um, you know, we had Jeff from – Jeff was our first drummer, but we we parted ways with him. Uh, um, And then just like, you know, I was doing some thing with Carl and and Phil from the Templars. We did this one track, and I I was hoping to see more coming from that, but I I don't know about that. And, you know, there's little always little things. I'm always going to want to make music, you know what I mean? And, um, I want to make music with Powerhouse at some point. Yeah, you know? make lovely music. Because, I mean, you know, he's got, <laughs> he's got one of those voices that just can't stay dormant. You know what I mean? And he's got, he, I mean, he co- helped me co- uh, write, co-wrote, really, uh, for the love of it all. I mean, he, when, you know, he came up with that first verse, you know, and it set the whole tone for the whole song, so... So uh, so when you, so right now you're basically set up for next year. You got yeah. a couple of rancid shows working on old firm shit. Yeah. And when you're home, you're home with your family. That's right. I take Wolfgang to hockey practice. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I take Soren to preschool. Um, you know, uh just hanging out with the kids, you know. That's that's to me. I'm a family man and that's all I kind of ever wanted to be. And a lot and I've kind of realized at my in my age now I'm 44 years old. And I and I love being with my family and love being with my kids and that's kind of my primary purpose now is to raise these kids. Like everything else <clears throat> I'm very grateful for, but it's secondary. You know, as you know, being a dad. Oh yeah. I it's I tell everybody, um <clears throat> it's um being a parent is the hardest thing you will ever willingly want to do. Yeah. You know, cause it's hard. But I love it. Uh, you know, like you know, like I, I, I love talking about my kids like they're my friends because they are. They're like my my best friends. So yeah. I treat you know I treat them like my best friends. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, you know, it's great when you're sitting and when you're watching wrestling with your kid. You know what I mean? Or or the other day, you know, Wolfgang he went to his first football game, NFL game, and he's coming back because we took power, powerhouses is his, his godfather. And um, and he was telling him about division rivalries and explaining the way it works. And then so he went and read, did some research while he was at school, read some football book, and came back with all these stats for me. <laughs> there you, you know go. What I mean? And it's just that's the way he is. And you just realize he's just like he was telling me about you know the other day about Pablo Picasso and Cubism, and I was like, fuck, I did a report book report on Pablo Picasso when I was in. I know grade. about MQism. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I learned about. Shout out to MQ wherever you at, MQ? whatever shadows you. Whatever you're painting on. Um. Dude, let me tell you a story about MQ. <laughs> All right. Number one, you guys are playing over up at the fucking, uh, at the park side. And I must have been up in that backstage with you, with you guys for at least an hour. And I turn around and there's MQ. And I'm like, yo, M, when the fuck did you get here? And he's like, I've been, I've been here since you walked up the room. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> how the fuck? He's just like camouflage. Listen, I know that's my brother. Like my whole life since like 1980, and I probably seen him out of all those years half the time of all those years because he wasn't there, or you know all those years. But shout out to MQ, look out for him. Um, he's online. He has a web store where he has his artwork, and um, look out for him. You'll see him on the streets. Um, yeah, you see him everywhere. One last question Shoot. before we get out of here. All right. You're on a desert island. You got to pick one record. Uh, one, and I, and I, oh, I know there's so many. Uh, I heard that shit. I ask everybody this one record and why. Now well, think about it quick, and then I'll tell you all right, mine. All right, all right, all right. And I'm going to ask Power House his, as a matter of fact. So you got to really okay. think one record for the rest of your life. That's it. Okay, well, it's, uh, you know, two popped in my head. So you got to pick one. But I'm going to explain both of them first. <laughs> yeah, there's no Caitlyn Jenner stuff going on here. Picking, you got to pick. You got to pick a pick a team. <laughs> All right, so like, All right, okay. I'm probably going to go with the third Oi record because it's a comp. Yeah. The, oh, so all right. Let me say this better. No comps. No ah, best. That's no bullshit. best. No best stuff. That's like I want the best of oh. everything album. No, okay. Well, yeah, I want the best of everything album. Okay, well, I, 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 I am a vinyl collector. So I, then if I can't have the comp, then I would say Motorhead Overkill. Wow. 
because that's my one of my all time favorite records. I don't get sick of listening to that record. My favorite Motorhead song is Metropolis. It's got Limb from Limb. It's got I'll Be Your Sister. It's got Capricorn. It's got uh, uh, obviously the, the uh, Overkill. Um, Motorhead, huh? Yeah, I mean that's shout my, out to Lemmy. You fucking a, bro. I, you know I saw him just recently. Me and Powerhouse saw him here in San Francisco, and then I, we were on tour basically with them. Well, they were down on the Riot Fest shows. <clears throat> so I saw him three times in one week, you know. So that was a big fucking deal for me. Because the last time I did that was like in the mid-80s. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, and, he, and Lemmy still, you know, he's out there. He's That's the shit. Dude, he's know. seventy. He's going to be 70 years old Christmas Eve. Exactly. Crazy, crazy. Powerhouse. One record. Speak right into that one. One record and why. Well, uh, we're going to say uh, ACDC Highway to Hell. Oh, oh you yeah. some definitely Jersey white that's trash going right on there. heavy. That's how we roll. <laughs> heavy, heavy. Right there. Uh, that's, that's, but that's, but that's a great that, choice. They're, they're big records. All right. Uh, as me and Powerhouse the other day were talking about the best ACDC records, and I said, Power Age is overlooked. Highway to Hell. <laughs> right? That's the motherfuckers, <laughs> right? Yeah. All right. Well, yo, Doug Weber. Doug Weber. One record. On an island, what's it gonna be? And I know, I know it would be set it off, but besides set it off, <laughs> Hazen Street. Hazen Street. Yeah, oh, no. I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll let you know mine. You know, you know what, what is, mine? Yeah, Michael Jackson Thriller. You're now, fucking out of your and, mind. And I, I'm telling you why. I thought about this. Now you're gonna Obviously. be stuck. You're sc- you're stuck on this fucking island hearing <laughs> we are the real crew every day. For the rest of your life. I'm down right? for that shit. Okay. <laughs> now, when you're happy, sad, horny, I'm tired. Now, me, <laughs> I got, you want to be starting something. <laughs> guys. And then I got I got a hard song, a slow song. There's even some guitar. You That's know, right? true. You got a lot of moods. Steve, was Steve Stevens on that well, one? I don't know. Probably. I think he might have been Let's on Thriller. It, whatever it is, but Michael Jackson Thriller. Well, you know what? I that's the probably the record I least would expect for you to say, but at the same time, I look at you, nigga. And I think, <laughs> and, how appropriate! And I know which other record you think, but that's offline. I can see you yeah, moonwalking yeah, when yeah, everybody like, goes to bed. Tonight. I say you want to be starting something. You got to be starting. I'm, tell, I'm telling you right now. <laughs> Wearing one white glove when you're playing that bass would be <laughs> fucking it. tight, bro. <laughs> I'll tell you a quick little funny story. Um, um, we tore a lot with um, Suicidal Tendency. Shout out to those guys. They're very good friends of ours and a great band. And I told them one day we were talking about first records. And I told Mike, I was like, yeah, my first record was um, uh, Michael Jackson Thriller. And he lost it. Somehow in his head, I had a Michael Jackson zipper jacket. I'm moonwalking Jerry Curls. To this day, he somehow made this story. So every time he sees me, I say, so with Michael Jackson. And he's like, oh, the zipper jacket. Um, but uh, I would definitely love to see yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. No, but jackets. shout out to Michael Jackson. <laughs> Ho- you know, even though you were a weirdo or whatever. <laughs> You know, hopefully you didn't do what you we think you did. Oh, and, he did it, bro. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Come on. You're paying people off. You right. did some shit. Look at, Lee, look at, first of all, leave Michael Jackson alone. All right? Um, don't tell me you're one of these lion guys, too, that got all bent out of shape when they killed the lion. You know? <laughs> you know you know those people. Look, at, I hate, I'm for the animals. But all right. You know, there's a lot of things going on that we should be worried about. There's a fucking lion right at this well, second. Yeah, Shout well, out like, to all the vegans out there. Yo, Toby, what up? <laughs> But um, <laughs> the one, the one vegan. No, you my know. One, that's my, and the oldest, we're the oldest. You know what I mean? So, yo, shout out to Crossroads. They're fucking. I'm gonna go see Crossroads. the vegetarian vegan motherfuckers. They're gonna go. You gonna go? They're gonna eat that shit. Yeah, cause um, Tao, he's a. Uh, you know, I met him not too long ago. But you know, again, hardcore dude is. Yeah, uh, is yeah. You know, I'm, I'm always I'm psyched when people from our world. One hundred percent. Um. Step up. Um, they get into whatever they get into, and they make moves. Yeah. And they do big things. And um, he has that restaurant. I heard about Freddie Winter. To me, I like anything that's good. I don't yeah. care what it is. And um, he's invited us to the restaurant, so we're gonna go check them out when we get to LA. So nice. I'm hoping to get him on a podcast too, because that's uh, awesome. Again, you know, like um, we're all about lifestyle. We're all about anybody doing something positive. Or semi negative. Yo, shout out to Scarhead. What up, Ezek? <laughs> shout, out, shout out to Scam Dust. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we actually look out um by this time the Tijuana Scam Dust interview should be out. Um you gotta check that one out. It's you know crazy. What? Talking about some dodginess. Talk about the most dodgy fucking teeth in a man's mouth. 
What up, Big Chris? Oh, Shout shit. out to Big Chris. Shout out to we talk, all our West Coast family, all our East Coast family. Big Chris takes a bite out of a sandwich and takes half yo, of his cheek off. Yo, sh- <laughs> shout out to, um, to Amer- Oh, How you say his, his the brand? Amorta, right? L- L- Amorta. 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 But shout out to them. Um, shout go, out to Dirty Mick. Yeah, to Dirty Mick. Go support everybody's um, web. Uh, you know, support Rancid, Old Firm. Support um, Powerhouse. Get your house painted. Call them up. <laughs> um, support Madball. Go buy a Madball record, as we now. all know. Exactly. Go support the podcast. Spread the word. I want to thank my boy Lars for coming through. I want to thank Powerhouse for being Powerhouse. I want to thank <laughs> Doug Webber for being a fucking big jerk off. I want to thank Daddy for fucking being a jujitsu nigga. I want to thank the fucking the gook over there for being. A white trash gook and but shout out to everybody in California. We are-